Hi there, this is George Whittem reporting for Whittem's World. This week's going to be a little different because I figured I would do more of a demo of how I would use audio processing for a specific user. And the request that came in this week is perfect for it. Lisa Hicks wrote in a message um, asking about how to deal with declicking or clicking noises in her audio recording. Um, she says, I'm pretty successful removing clicks between words, but this can be time consuming. And she thought she might like to try using a declicking tool. In this case, she discovered something I hadn't even heard about yet. And it's called the Acon Digital Restoration Suite. So she sent this along to me and it's new to me. So I figured why not try it out, get the demo and give it a whirl. Let me give you a little demo of how Acon Digital's Restoration Suite, primarily the declicking and decrackling tool, can help a recording like yours that may have just too many clicks. And she said, I have a nasal problem which causes a click in my breaths. I'm doing some exercises to help eliminate those, but we'll be curious to see if they are eliminated by the declicker. So she uh, attached a, a clip of audio. Let's run it through its paces and see what this Acon Digital Restoration Suite software can do. So I've loaded her audio file into my usual editor, Twisted Wave. Let's play a little bit of it and see if we can get some evidence of the clicking sound she's referring to. A plague on those pickled herrings, he cried, trying to pretend he had not been drinking. Before he could say more, Olivia's steward, Malvolio, came bustling in. He was a sour man with no taste for Sir Toby's foolery. All right, well, interestingly, I don't hear nearly a severe clicking sound that I might have expected based off that description, as I would think. Maybe in this case, Lisa's referring to when she takes these very deep, strong nasal breaths. Grow exasperated. This one right here. A breath like that, yeah, while it does have some clicking in it, even if you declick that breath, it's not a breath I would want to probably leave behind in my audiobook. It's It's sort of a wind-up breath to get ready to deliver that character, but I don't think the breath itself adds anything to the character. So in this case, I would actually remove the breath completely and silence it. Um, so let's see if we can find another section where the clicks start to become more of an issue. What can you tell for Sir Toby's foolery? Malvolio. Malvolio. What can you tell me about this caller? Right here, there's a few minor clicks that are audible. For Sir Toby's foolery. Malvolio. Especially right before the word Malvolio. Malvolio. Instead of trying to manually declick this, especially if you're doing an audiobook that's very long, it could be extremely tedious. Let's try this Acon Digital Restore uh, restoration suite and give it a shot, see how it stacks up to the, the 800 pound gorilla of declicking tools, I think, these days, which is Isotope RX. Um, so I've loaded it, installed the demo, and it shows right up in Twisted Wave in the audio units flat list or it's just easier to go into the to the submenu here of um, specific manufacturers, which it breaks it down here. And I'll go to Acon Digital, and let's load up the D-Click tool. As you can see, it's in demo mode. I'll click OK. It'll let me demo this software for a while, and then eventually it will require that I pay for it. But this is a good way to, to learn how to use a software and see if it works for you. So this has a declicker and a decrackler mode. Right now I have only the declicker mode turned on. And I'm going to see how the declicker mode um, behaves. So let's, let's review this section here where we heard some mouth clicks. Fool foolery. Malvoli. Foolery. Okay, so there's that little sound, which you're hearing from me right now too. As I, as I talk about clicking, I'm hearing them more and more in my own voice. Uh, let's go ahead and enable the, the declicker. And right now I have the click length set at five milliseconds and the sensitivity at 26% uh, as a starting point. Let's just see when I turn that on by clicking the on button there, making sure it's not bypassed. Let's see what happens to those mouth noises. Malvoli foolery. 
Malvoli foolery. Malv so I can hear the soft palate part of the sound, just like the very soft sound of the tongue coming off the mouth, roof of the mouth type sound. But the sharper clicky sounds have been eliminated by using this in the uh, processing chain. Malvoli, 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 Mal. Then I'll go ahead and bypass it. Malvoli, 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 Malvoli. And I'll turn it back on. Malvoli, Malvoli, Mal. So you can see there's a little evidence of that click sound there, but the sharper part of the click, the high frequency part that really stands out, is gone. Let's just see what happens when we crank up the sensitivity. So I'll go ahead and slide sensitivity over a little bit. And since those sounds may have a longer duration than five milliseconds, we'll try cranking that up a little bit. And let's play back that section again. Malvoli, malvoli, malvoli. So not all sounds, mouth sounds, can be removed with a declick tool like this because if they're too soft or too gentle of an attack, um, they're just not going to be recognized as a click. Let's see if the decrackler would make any difference. I don't think it will, but I'll turn that on separately and let's see what it does. Malvoli, Malvoli, Mal so as you can hear, the, the clicking, the original mouth click that we were repaired pretty effectively with declicker wasn't really fixed by using the decrackler. A crackle is a lot of clicks in a row, like the sound of a crackling fire or wrinkling up some cellophane, plastic, that sound. That, those sounds happen in rap, rapid succession, and it uses a different algorithm to remove them. Unless that's the kind of mouth click you're going to have, it's not likely that the crackler is going to be as helpful. It's more likely you're going to have individual clicks spaced a few seconds to milliseconds apart, and the declicker is going to do a better job with those. Malvoli, malvoli. Now let's see if we leave the declicker on with some pretty aggressive settings, 35% and 8 milliseconds, and let's say we apply it to the entire track. Let's see if it audibly degrades the overall sound quality. A plague on those pickled herrings, he cried, trying to pretend he had not been drinking. Before he could say more, Olivia's steward, Malvolio, came bustling in. He was a sour man with no taste for Sir Toby's foolery. All right, and now let me bypass it, and now you'll hear it without again. A plague on those pickled herrings, he cried, trying to pretend he had not been drinking. Before he could say more, Olivia's steward, Malvolio, came bustling in. He was a sour man. So, surprisingly, even with these pretty aggressive declicking settings... 35% sensitivity and click length of 8 milliseconds. It really degrades the audio quality of the uh, original file very little, I thought. Um, so the declick tool here definitely seems to remove the some of the clicks. Now the nasal clicks that she was describing that's happening in the nasal cavity, the only time I heard them have any evidence is when she was taking those very deep and nasal breaths. Now when you're doing a deep powerful breath inhale it's going to make more noise when you breathe through your nostrils because those are smaller openings for the air to travel so if you go versus it's going to be a lot noisier so um, I generally don't recommend doing big inhales through the nose and if you're really careful and you really open your mouth you can uh, your throat and everything when you breathe you can breathe in a lot of air quickly pretty quietly like So you can bring in a lot more air if you do open the mouth and not use the nose. So these are little rules of thumb. But breaths can be okay in a narration when they're in enhancing the read or enhancing the acting. As soon as they distract the listener from the experience, that's when they should be uh, attenuated or totally eliminated. But in this, in this context, the declick tool seems to be helpful. Um, they have other tools as well in the suite. If I go to Effects... They have the declip tool, which I only would ever need that is if I recorded a whole audiobook chapter, came back and realized there were sections of audio where I literally distorted because I recorded too high. 
And that would be the only case in which I would need a declipping tool. And what it does is it finds where there's distortion and rebuilds the waveform. So where the waveform would normally go up and be flattened off because it's clipped, the declip tool can restore and add back the bit of audio that was clipped off the top. Pretty amazing tool. There's also the dehum tool. If you need a dehum tool, you got to really look into why your studio is making that noise and deal with it from the source. It, that's the way I look at it. But if the hum is something you can't deal with and it's not something that you can just EQ out using a graphic equalizer, which is what I usually do, do the dehum tool can come in handy. And it's a pretty smart tool. It has a lot of power, powerful features like the ability to filter out numbers of harmonics. It's a demo on YouTube of uh, D-Click and D-Hum from Acon Digital Restoration Tools. I recommend checking it out if you want to know more about how the D-Hum tool works. And last but not least in the suite, there is the Denoise tool. Now, you guys know what I, how I feel about denoisers, and I generally don't like using them because I think they can be a little bit too heavy-handed. But this uh, Denoise tool is extremely flexible and adjustable to make it be very, very subtle in its in its use. If you're doing audiobook narration or anything long form where declicking manually, removing clicks, things like that, it's just out of the question. And these extra little tools will speed up your workflow. I can't recommend Acon Digital's restoration tools enough, especially at the price point of what currently is only $99. It is uh there's nothing out there that touches it in that price range, and there's nothing else that I know of that's in that price range that does what this can do. So um, for 99 bucks, it's a total no-brainer. Even if you're just using D-Click, it's going to cost you a third of what you'd need to get the D-Clicking tool from uh, Isotope RX. So this is a great alternative for you guys out there. If you have any questions at all about how I might be able to set up audio processing for you, go over to vostudiotech.com, and I can create a custom set of processing settings that work with your voice, your mouth sounds, whatever click issues you're dealing with, and I can fine calibrate these settings for you and send you the settings that you'll need to get the best possible audio quality while you master an audiobook or clean up a narration recording. So vostudiotech.com is the home for that. Just click on services and look for virtual engineering stacks and audiobook mastering template. Thanks again for watching. Send in your questions to widomsworld at edgestudio.com and I look forward to answering them on a future show. If you need any help, you can also always just call Edge. The phone number is down below. Thanks again for listening. This has been George Whittem reporting for Whittem's World, and I'll see you guys next time.